Go look up cleaning records on YouTube and you'll find everything from simply brushing dust off to literally putting wood glue into the grooves. And surprisingly, that one actually works. Today, I'm gonna show you five essential steps for getting your pieces of vinyl squeaky clean, along with a tour of my cleaning station and a complete walkthrough of me cleaning a piece of vinyl from start to actually spinning. First off, I gotta take a minute because there is a bit of an audience here. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider it. It really means a lot. I cannot tell you how excited I am to see this grow and to grow so quickly. I gotta give an official shout out to the Cheap Audio Man. Go check out his channel. He is a sincere guy who is extremely knowledgeable and he has given me some great help and he's even brought some of you here to the channel. So I really can't thank him enough. Also, check out all the creators in the vinyl and hi-fi community on here. They're there is a lot of great information out there and a lot of really great people too. Please know that I really, really, really value your time here and I feel an obligation to keep making more videos for you. So definitely keep the comments and suggestions coming. That is exactly where today's video came from, straight out of the comments. Cleaning your vinyl. Let's start with a clear definition of cleaning. This is not just taking one of these brushes and moving it around your records and maybe even putting some spray on it and wiping it down and calling it a day. After going around and researching and getting completely overwhelmed with all of the vast knowledge of cleaning records that's out there, it really does come down to two basic deep cleaning options, either ultrasonic cleaning or vacuum cleaning. And really, you could say that there's three ways because you could combine the two of those and have the most effective cleaning process that there is. Ultrasonic cleaning uses a cleaning solution to soak the vinyl in a tub, while at the same time, vibrations go through the solution and literally vibrate off the dust particles inside the grooves. You've probably come across this process if you've ever tried cleaning jewelry or any type of precious metals. Vacuum cleaning is just that. After using a solution to wipe down the records, you actually vacuum suck out the dust and debris using a vacuum of some sort. Now, the combining and automation of these two processes is what leads to super expensive cleaning machines like audio desks and others that can cost thousands. These are taking these two methods and combining them into a one button process that you don't even have to sit around for. After watching almost all of the videos out there, and I think that I probably have watched almost all of them, I can assure you. When cleaning a piece of vinyl, there are really five basic steps and how you do these steps and how much time and money is where all these different videos on YouTube and techniques come in. I think that I've got this distilled down to what I think is a good budget option. It's not too time intensive. And more importantly, it gets results and can be repeated over and over again for an entire collection. My collection, by the way, can be found on Discogs. If you wanna to talk to me about any of the stuff in there, definitely leave a comment below. This is not the same as prepping a record for playing. We'll get into that later after we're finished cleaning. Dusting should be done in a way that can let the record sit off of an edge so that you can wipe the dust off of the record, but it doesn't come back on the other side. You've probably experienced this. You wipe off dust from one side of the record while you're holding it, and then you flip it and the dust is right back on the other side. Don't hold your records while you're dusting them. Put it down on a table and also don't put it on a clean turntable either. Find a place like a cleaning station or something like that and dust off the record. This step is important because if you don't remove the dust, you will create mud in the second step. Cover the label and spray down the record with a cleaning solution. Here we are again at a vinyl crossroads of what cleaning solution to use. This is one of those moments in vinyl collecting where there are a thousand options. I personally stay away from things that seem like no brainers. Sink water, it's dirty. Maybe not to drink in some cases, but for cleaning records, it has minerals in it and those can harm your records. And same goes for spring water. For cleaning records, distilled water is best since it has no minerals. For me, I also stay away from alcohol. Most people agree that this can harm your records. Others have used it for years. To me, again, it just seems like there are better options, which brings me to what I use, which is TurgiClean. 
This is a surfactant, which is something that's used to break down surface water tension. Now to break that down a little bit, the grooves that we're cleaning are microscopic. So even a little drop of distilled water or alcohol may not even get into that groove. So using some type of surfactant will allow the water to get down into these grooves. Turgiclean is used by the Library of Congress for archival purposes, so you can be safe to know that it can hold up for long periods of time and not damage your vinyl. Also, it only takes 10 drops of water in a gallon of distilled water to clean hundreds of records. So in my opinion, it's cheap and it's extremely effective. You have to be careful about how you use it and follow the instructions exactly. The drops are small and it's gonna seem like there's nothing in that entire gallon. Be sure to know how long you have it. It can only last for two years, so make sure that you actually use it. Also, you have to store it in dark temperature controlled environments as well. After you've sprayed down the record with your surfactant, you wanna wipe the record down with a cleaning pad. I use a paint pad that has these very fine bristles on it. If you take a look at products like the Spin Clean or even high-end audio desks, at the point of contact with the record, they're using some type of fine brush. And this, along with the previous step, using the surfactant spray, will get a lot of the dirt and grime out of the grooves. I hold the brush down just like this on the record and don't apply too much pressure and then spin the record around and this way it evenly distributes all of the surfactant around the record and gets it into the grooves. You wanna rinse off the solution with distilled water only. You need to make sure that you don't leave the Turgiclean surfactant on the water so you do a good rinse with distilled water to wash away any of the leftover solution. I also use a painter's brush to make sure that I really get all that solution around and make sure to rinse off as much as I can. You can see that the vinyl gets really wet when you do this. The grooves will keep most of the moisture on the record and away from the label as well, but you should use that label protector. But the more you do this, the more you'll feel out how much liquid to use each time. The final step is to dry or remove the solution that you use. This is the tricky part and where I found that using a vacuum gets the job done best. You don't want to use a cloth or a rag to do this since it's only going to introduce more lint and debris. And you also don't want to let them sit and air dry since this takes a really long time and can leave unwanted stains on the vinyl. And if you have a lot of records and you're doing this all at once, it can also be extremely cumbersome. So vacuum cleaning the records gets all the remaining solutions off as well as it leaves you with a dry record that's ready to spin right away. So I'm gonna give you a little tour here of my cleaning station and some tips and tricks that I'm using currently. This is ever changing, so if you have some cool tweaks or anything like that, definitely hit me up in the comments below so that we can chat about it. I'm always trying to adjust things. To start, I have a separate table that I'm using, which is actually a DJ stand, but you can use any table or desktop. I wanted a dedicated cleaning space since I know I'm gonna be cleaning all of my records, which is over a thousand, and I didn't wanna do it in my kitchen and get in my wife's way or have the kids all in my stuff, so I picked a corner of the basement and set up this table. I went totally overkill here. You certainly don't need to do this, but I added this light rig you do want to give yourself some type of really good light so that you can see all the dust on the vinyl. I then have two homemade cleaning turntables. I got the idea for these from VinylVac and Vinyl for Miles, which are both great channels. Go and check those out if you can. This is just a Lazy Susan from Amazon that I glued a quarter 20 screw to and then used three of these drawer inserts that I cut out to have the vinyl rest on. For 45s, I actually use a smaller baker's turntable that's actually used for showing cakes or cookies or something like that. And it's only seven inches and I glued a screw to it again, but also glued down a slim 45 adapter. You need the adapter for 45 holes and you need a slim one since the vacuum will not seal to a normal turntable 45 spindle. Now I can just throw my 45s on the platter and they stay put and I can vacuum them down. To cover the labels, I have a label protector that I got from Amazon, but I found that if you spray the solution in a specific way, you don't even get the labels close to the solution. I have my Turgiclean spray solution in a spray bottle mixed over here, and then I have a small bowl that I fill with distilled water and have the brushes for rinsing in there. Last, I have what I think is the most important part of this entire setup, and that is the vinyl vac. 
which is a PVC attachment that goes on to the end of a standard shop vac. You can get this on Amazon. It's very clever and well designed and it works out really well. Yes, it is just a PVC pipe with some felt on it, but I know if I tried to make something like this, I would totally screw it up. It's priced perfectly at $29 on Amazon. Links for it are in the description. It comes with extra felt pads and the guy who makes it actually came up with the Lazy Susan design and really this entire method that I'm using. So hats off to VinylVac. They have a channel, go check them out. You do need a shop vac for this to go on. And a large one will be a little difficult to make a smaller adapter for this vinyl vac attachment. If you're like me, you also probably don't wanna use your home or garage shop vac since it's probably a mess anyway. I got this small one at Target for $29. It's the perfect size for the room here and the vacuum just sits underneath the table ready to go. You put the vinyl vac attachment on the vacuum itself and go to work cleaning your records. I gotta say, this thing is extremely awesome. I was very skeptical about it first because it looks like it's very janky, but it actually works really well. One other mod that I have is I take a piece of plastic and I cover this portion of the opening when I'm vacuuming off my 45s on the smaller turntable. VinylVac does offer a smaller 45 size attachment, but this solution works for me and this is what I've been using at the moment. Here's a real time process of me cleaning two records. I'm gonna do side one on a 45 so you can see the 45 example, and then side two I'm gonna do on a full size LP so you can see that.
Even before I start the cleaning process, I take the record out of the jacket and put the jacket back into the inner sleeve since for the most part, this is where it's gonna stay forever. When I'm done cleaning, the records go into Hudson Hi-Fi inner sleeves. These are very similar to the MoFi ones, but a lot cheaper. Let me know if you wanna see a video about these because I took forever picking these out and finding them and figuring out which ones I wanna use. The record goes into the back of the outer sleeve so that it will protect the jacket, but also so I can see the colored vinyl if there is some. If it's a 45, it goes into a big fudge 45 sleeve, which are just like the Hudson Hi-Fi ones, but they are seven inch size. This is the only company that I could find that makes seven inch of these rice paper sleeves that were affordable. If there's a cool printed sleeve, it'll also go in the outer sleeve of the 45 as well, but the record does not go back into actual 45 printed sleeves. Also, I keep the opening of the records to the side when I put them into the sleeves, so this way dust does not fall into the records when they're on the shelf. After the record is cleaned and ready to be played, I will use a static-free brush and give a brief wipe, mostly to reduce static and remove any pieces of debris that fall onto the record while handling it. There is nothing that you can do to live totally dust-free. Trust me, I have cameras and lenses and records. Dust is just an inevitability. I am inevitable. Since the record is clean, we are not wiping too much dust on the table at this point. Some people at this point also use an anti-static gun. I've been considering one and most likely will probably get one since they do greatly reduce static charge and static charge can actually cause a lot of those pops and clicks that you're hearing. As I've said numerous times in this video, there are tons of ways to clean your records. This is just my personal solution. There are probably better ones out there with better better results. You probably also need to pay a better price to get them. For this setup, including the two Lazy Susans, a roll of drawer pads, the vinyl vac, a mini shop vac, a bottle of Turgiclean, a spray bottle, and a gallon of distilled water, you're looking at about $130. And you could cut that cost in places if you're crafty. She's crafty. In my experience, it seems this is the most effective solution versus cost. And from here, you're basically taking these steps and automating them and making them more user-friendly, but you will pay for that. Tell me some of your solutions below in the comments. I'm sure there is something out there that I'll see that'll make me change the way I do this, but for now, this is giving me great results and it can actually be kind of fun just sitting around cleaning your records and listening to records while you're cleaning records. If you have a cleaning product out there that you would like me to test, please send it along. I would love to try and make my process easier or less noisy. I will say that that shop vac does get a little noisy in this process. Follow me on Discogs if you wanna see my collection or talk about any of my records, subscribe so I can keep this going. Like I said before, I feel a huge obligation to the people who have subscribed already. So I wanna keep making videos for you and I hope you keep watching them. So we'll see you on the next one.